so we are so excited. We are the Hallmarkies podcast and I'm Rachel and we are here to do a very special interview and Amber's here with me. Hi everybody. Yes, and we are here to interview Marcus Rosner, a uh, one of our favorite hall stars. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, happy to be here. We're so excited. And uh, so uh, we just wanted to start by having, if you could introduce yourself and uh, let us know how you became interested in acting, what inspired you to become an actor? Uh, yeah, well, I'm Marcus Rosner. I'm sure a lot of uh, Hallmark fans probably know me best as uh, Charles on the second season of Wayne Calls the Heart and yeah. various various other uh, Hallmark movies in which I get down on one knee and get rejected. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I started acting basically when I was 21. I started taking it seriously. Um, I graduated from high school. I'd been a jock my entire life. I hadn't really thought about doing any sort of uh, performing arts or drama. And then my mom took me on a graduation uh, trip to New York City because I always wanted to go and I'd never been. Being from Canada, it was always this foreign city to us that was seen in all these movies and this destination that I always wanted to visit and see what the, the culture was like. And we went to see uh, some Broadway productions, which was literally my first experience with any sort of uh, plays or on stage performances like that. And I kind of mm -hmm. fell in love. And uh, and that sort of inspired me to to look up the closest acting school, which is in Vancouver. And uh, yeah, I ended up going there. And then a few years later, after traveling the world, I circled back and started pursuing acting a little more seriously. Awesome. So do you prefer um, like film or screen acting versus stage acting or is like stage acting your secret passion? Um, I have not done professionally any... Uh, any stage acting. Okay. I mean, we work on that stuff a lot in, like most actors, even professional actors will, will be regularly in class, honing your skills, sharpening mm -hmm. your skills. And, and so in class, you work on a lot more uh, stage stuff because there's a lot more dialogue and there's a, just a lot more material to actually mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. of to work on. Um, I've only done film and TV professionally, but I think that I enjoy the, uh, the plays more to work on myself but as a viewer i've always enjoyed film and television a little bit more do you remember yeah. what shows you saw when you went what broadway shows yeah i saw the jersey boys i saw stomp and something off broadway i can't remember um i can't remember but i definitely saw those two so that they were both even like more musicals than anything yeah but another, another thing is we walked by uh the new york film academy and we popped our heads in there and i was like what like, what is this? What do you do here? And they were like, oh, this is the, the acting department. I never <laughs> even thought about the possibility of like teaching someone to act. I just, honestly, the entire thing was completely foreign to me, performing and the arts and everything. <laughs> Little did you know that you'd pretend to be acting in, uh, in New York, in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Hallmark. laughs> yeah, it's been a long, long road, many yeah. chapters. <laughs> Uh, there's there's nothing like uh, Vancouver as New York in Hallmark movies. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> funny. Toronto looks a lot more like New York, but they make Vancouver work sometimes too. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh. So yeah, as you said, you're often the wrong guy in these Hallmark movies. Mm -hmm. and, series. <laughs> and how do you? I guess how do you feel about that? Is it frustrating for you, or do you just kind of embrace it, or? I just kind of embrace it. It doesn't bother me much. I mean, it's it's really nice to see all the fans on Twitter um, get uh, get behind me and uh, cause the uproar on my behalf. But um, it's fine. I, I, I have like a little demo reel of being uh, rejected now, which I find <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was definitely one of the people who was on your side when you, in, at least in Christmas and Evergreen, because mm -hmm. that was absolutely the saddest breakup that has ever happened. <laughs> That's what everybody keeps saying. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, uh, I was like, why is she even leaving Spencer? This is absurd. <laughs> that's my uh yeah that's that's my saving grace that's that's the one thing i get to try to do is um <laughs> is make it as hard for the audience to actually <laughs> let this guy go i mean in the movies it's always so easy they're just like oh yeah it didn't work out bye and 
Yeah, they don't even care, but I was like, the guy literally flew in on a helicopter. <laughs> I kept mentioning it. <laughs> Have you ever felt like that you read a script and you're like, they picked the wrong guy. Like, my guy was better than the lead guy. Because we kind of felt that uh, way. Christmas and Evergreen. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll definitely let Teddy Sears I mean, know that next time. What did he do that was so great? He, he, he wanted to go on a cruise, like, the whole time. I know. Yeah, that's true. He just wanted to get down to Florida. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I honestly, my job when I play those particular roles is just to try to make that decision difficult, I guess. And uh, and if I've done that, then I guess I did a good job. Yeah, you're killing it. You're just like... <laughs> Doesn't he know that you can't go to Florida for Christmas? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're already in Vermont. I mean... <laughs> Like you're in Christmas land. <laughs> Just hang out till the new year. <laughs> now, did you grow up watching these kind of like Christmas movies or these kind of no. films? Like we we don't have the Hallmark Channel in Canada. I mean, I'm in LA right now, but um, mm -hmm. like when I'm in Canada, we don't we don't even get these movies most of the time. We get them on uh, what we call the the W Network or the Women's Network, and so they they'll buy them off Hallmark and sort of re-air them, and yeah. uh, and so that's when we kind of get to see them, but, um, you know, we never know when they're going to be on cause they're not promoted. And so, yeah, I never really grew up watching these. I didn't really know what the concept of a movie of the week was even. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys have national health care, but I, but no, no Hallmark. <laughs> yeah. It's so. a off. <laughs> Gift and a curse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> you, you always grew up in, in Canada. You, that's where you're yeah yeah i don't know if you guys know where alberta is i actually didn't grow up in vancouver um i grew up in a little town called sherwood park alberta which is a suburb of edmonton i don't know if you ever heard of the edmonton oilers or mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's probably our biggest claim to fame um <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's very far north i think we're in the same latitude as like moscow so it gets very cold and uh yeah that's that's where i grew up and then um yeah moved out to vancouver when I graduated from high school to try to do this. So mm, cool. Do you feel like you're getting closer to getting the, 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 the leading man kind of things, or is it sort of your niche that you're. No, I mean, I've like on other networks, I've definitely, I've done. Yeah. The in firehouse in Christmas. So. He's the lead. Yeah. Yeah. I did the lead now in a couple of lifetime movies. I've been uh, a lead in those. One of them was a really bad guy. Um, like a serial killer. And so, yeah, I mean, I've done <laughs> plenty of leads. So just, that guy doesn't get the girl. Yeah, he did. Well, he, yeah, he, he tried to take the girl. Um, that was what happens when all my characters in Hallmark get pushed to the edge, actually. <laughs> Flies off the handle and won't take no for an answer. That's the, um, uh, the part two of Christmas and Evergreen. Yeah, exactly. The dark turn. Uh, yeah, so I mean, like it's. I, I, I'm. I mean, I'm. I get to play leads on other networks, and so yeah, it doesn't really bother me none. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure at some point I'll play a lead in one of these Hallmark movies, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want you to be the lead in our fake Hallmark movie that we want to exist, where there's just like twenty guys all working in dueling firehouses, because you <laughs> you have experience at least, like. Family-wise, right? I read somewhere that your your yeah. dad and brothers are firemen. My my grandpa was the chief of the fire department in all of British Columbia, and then my stepdad was a firefighter, and my brother is training to become a firefighter right now. So, yeah, kind of our whole family. Yeah, so you're just perfect for yeah. our, our dueling like, firehouses movie. I got we, the experience. <laughs> we feel like Hallmark doesn't use the men well enough, like right. that, that they you know rely on your Lacey Chabert's and your your Danica McKellar, who are amazing. But how awesome would it be to have a movie with two dueling firehouses full of the Hallmark hunky men? Mm. Mm. Yeah. What uh, what what holiday do you think it would be for? See, we're thinking summer, a summer nights okay. movie, because and there would yeah. be like a like a Fourth of July pancake breakfast or something. Uh, yeah, and that'd it'd be, be cool. like we could, it could be like the pancake wars. You could set it up at the fire department. Mm -hmm. Get a lot of trucks in the background. Everybody's yeah. dressed in their fire gear and yeah. oh yeah, I'm seeing it. I like right? it. <laughs> no. 
It and then that way we good. could just use all of the, like, we were thinking we could have one firehouse of the guys who are usually the leading men, and then one firehouse that are usually the wrong guys. It would be really fun. <laughs> right? I like it. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing Home and Family on the 23rd, uh, the homework um, talk show, so yeah. I'll, uh, I'll pitch it while I'm there. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I, we, we've even got uh, Nina Weinman can write it she'll be on board like we can we can do this <laughs> jesse hutch has already agreed he, he'll be, yeah oh yeah you got hutch yeah yeah <laughs> so awesome okay so um i i was wondering what it was like to i know it was a small role but to be on once upon a time what was that like uh it was good i mean i think i did two episodes of that it was a pretty small role yeah it was exciting to be part of that um they did 11 episodes of Frozen, which at the time, Frozen was the biggest thing since sliced bread. And so the fact that they were doing it on Once Upon a Time was, uh, was we got a lot of press and it was sort of this big movement and they were, mm -hmm. um, they were filling out all the, the roles, the recognizable roles from the, the, the animated movie and they were finding all these doppelganger actors to, to match them. And then they were like, oh, and Hans needs um, these brothers that are sort of just referenced in the movie. And so... I just, I got to be one of Hans's brothers that sort of drives him to the edge to be evil, I guess. And, uh, and it was fun. It was, uh, I mean, there's, that show is super elaborate when it comes to things like um, props and, and costumes. I mean, at one point we were on this rocking full scale pirate ship that was in this soundstage that was just green screen everywhere. And it was, it was really cool. I mean, it's, uh, it's, just, it's the closest thing to like, uh, like a, large scale, large budget Disney movie where you got this big budget uh, special effects and stuff. So mm -hmm. it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really cool. And the costumes and stuff that had to be kind of fun. They had this entire, like one soundstage was just full of costumes and it was just the wardrobe department and they <laughs> just had racks and racks. Cause I think that was, I, I was on there by like the fifth season or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they just had, everything catalog that they had ever used and it was i mean it, it was like it was like a like giant tickle trunk <laughs> so what was it like being on when calls the heart what was that experience like that was interesting i did not know what to expect i mean i uh i originally auditioned for um uh for cavin's character mm -hmm. um yeah and then they called me back about a week and a half later to audition for Charles and then I didn't hear anything for like a month and then uh, they said okay so he's gonna be in the first two episodes which is really just one episode it's gonna be the premiere for the the season and then I, I was like okay and then did that and then they're like oh then they want you back so it's kind of one of these things where I just kept coming back and not knowing I was going to come back but given a lot of the scripts um, it seemed like I might come back and so um, but then again, it seemed like I was going to come back in season three. So, <laughs> so that's yeah. never a guarantee. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it was great. I mean, I honestly, because of the nature of like, I wasn't sure if I was ever coming back. I didn't really know the arc of this particular character. And I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they really knew what they wanted out of it either. And so there'd be one episode where I felt like I was kind of a jerk. And then the other episode, he's just this guy who's in love with her and it's out of his power that she's in love with this other guy. And so it was, it was interesting, but it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I, 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 I got along with everybody really great on that show and I still uh, chat with Aaron and, and uh, a bunch of people. So. And I imagine that your Twitter just blew up because everyone was like, get away from Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, we had the very first, before we shot anything, Aaron and I had this dance, um, rehearsal sort of thing or this this dance coach was teaching us this dance that we do at the top of one of the episodes mm -hmm. first thing she said to me when we met was uh listen it's not you but everyone is going to hate you <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i understand that's what i'm here for <laughs> that's funny <laughs> and it yeah. proved to be she proved to be right then super true right? there's, yeah. there's still some people though that are like uh they're like he didn't mean any harm and um they're just super sweet and super supportive and when i went to the uh the first hardy family reunion that they they did uh 
I'm Brian Bird, uh, or uh, yeah, Brian Bird was like, you know, it's not easy playing the bad guy, and he got everybody to stand up and give me this applause and stuff. <laughs> and it was it was super sweet. I mean, it's no one will uh, feel more guilty about uh, hating someone than Hallmark fans. And, that you know, is true. <laughs> <laughs> well, so as, as much as they disliked me, they couldn't have been sweeter about it. <laughs> <laughs> they probably make collages. Yeah, they did. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> collages of how they don't like you uh, yeah. <laughs> but but they'd have hearts on them so it would be okay <laughs> yeah yeah exactly too. the the best thing about the the hallmarkies is that they just own what they like and they get joy out of it because so many other fandoms that i'm a part of including disney as much as i love it it just doesn't it seems like people have this sort of like almost sort of this animosity almost it's like they it's like do you do you enjoy like do you get joy out of marvel or do you just like is it it's this this competition with dc or this competition with dreamworks or whatever it might be and it's like just love what you love like yeah i imagine that comes from just um so much source material people grew up with yeah one yeah. idea in their head and then if it doesn't completely fulfill that their idea that they they fell in love with and was part yeah. of their upbringing then it's it's really hard for them whereas there's not a lot of source material in that well there is the the books and stuff i suppose mm -hmm. that that hallmark borrows from but you know it's not these um, mainstream comic books that uh, yeah. you're trying to cast this person for that you hope the whole world won't hate and yeah so it's they they got a tough a tough thing to do over there that's for sure inherently if you're a fan of the hallmark channel you're you're coming for good times like you're not yeah. you're not trying to spread any negativity if anything you're trying to get away from it so yeah yeah i think that's why the channel's doing so well yeah i've definitely yeah i've read a bunch of things that are that uh pointed to that where with so much growing animosity in our society and in our world right now it's it's a nice reprieve it's a nice escape from that sort of thing and people are turning to it more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you grow up uh, as a big movie fan or was it something you, 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 you loved watching movies or? Yeah, I loved watching movies. I didn't watch a lot of TV, but I, I loved watching movies. I mean, I think the reason I got into acting was Tom Cruise's performance in Jerry Maguire, believe it or not. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm a huge sports fan and uh, just the way he walks and talks in that movie. I just, I wanted to learn how to do something like that. And, yeah, no, I I loved movies growing up. Yeah, yeah. I had love me at Hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the movies had me at Hello. Exactly. <laughs> I I love just uh, like the examination of human interaction, how we how we get along with each other, and just um, those indescribable moments you have that are super hard to interpret and make sense of. I love when those are reproduced on screen, and we get to. We get to see them and analyze them and, and wonder what they mean and what they mean between two people. And those things just fascinate me to no end. And so I love, I love film for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that you can get like a whole story in just two hours. Like I'm, I'm not as much of a TV. I mean, I like TV movies, but, uh, but as, as much as a TV series person, cause it's like, Oh my gosh, that's such a commitment. It's yeah. so long. <laughs> what I'm really liking these days, though, is the uh, like limited series. I think yes. like eight episodes or ten, ep ten episodes, and you just call it good after that. You can, you can tell a story. I think that's probably as close to perfect as I've seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, movies are good because they're short and sweet, but mm -hmm. you, get, you, you get a good mix of the detail and the, um, the brevity in a, in a limited series that you don't get in like a long-running TV show or a movie, I think. What are some se series you like? Uh, I'm a huge fan of Atlanta that Donald Glover mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. on FX. Uh, I just watched uh, Big Little Lies. That which, good. Yeah, and so both of these are like eight episodes. They're nice, mm -hmm. easily digestible. Big Little Lies was going to be a limited series, and now they're doing a second season. Meryl Streep's coming, so I'll tune in for that too, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, just really good writing is always a major key and good yeah. performances. But I mean, you get a lot of good performances when you get good writing. So. Mm -hmm yeah do you have do you have a favorite role that you played uh whether hallmark or not um on any project uh yeah i really like as far as hallmark specific i really like um 
being uh, Marco DeLuca on uh, we've yeah. done a few uh, vineyard movies with Rachel Lee Cook and Brendan mm-hmm. Penny and myself and, uh, and Tegan Moss. And, uh, and I love being that guy because he's, he's, he's probably, of, of all the characters I've played on Hallmark, he's probably the closest to myself. And, um, mm. and he gets to get the girl and not be a jerk and not propose and get rejected. And so, <laughs> so that's nice. Um, and we get to go to like this beautiful wine country and learn all about these wines and stuff. So it always feels like a bit of a vacation. And uh, I think th- I heard a rumor that we're going to make a third one. So, uh, mm. so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, probably that as far as Hallmark goes. And then I, I just did the short film two weeks ago with, uh, with uh, Heather Morris from, uh, from Glee. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that coming out. I had a great time doing that. We play, we play a couple, uh, man and wife, uh, on a farm. And our daughter is eight years old. And my wife, played by Heather Morris, uh, is suffering from depression and she has to go away to a clinic and I'm trying to explain to our, our eight year old daughter where mommy is and what's going on with her. And, uh, it's really difficult for her to understand. So I tell her this elaborate story about how mommy's battling this demon right now. And in her mind, she pictures mommy sort of in this choreographed dance, uh, Mm -hmm. battle thing in this dark world that we created, uh, battling this, this demon who's got these giant horns and this prosthetic makeup on and stuff. And, She's got a lot of dance experience because she was uh, Beyonce's backup dancer from back in the day. And then obviously Mm -hmm. from Glee, she did a lot of dancing on that. And so she's just this incredible dancer. And I think it's going to be just an amazing short film. So I'm looking forward to that coming out too. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that coming out as well now. Yeah. 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 It should be good. You have to... Uh, let us know the link or whatever. We can yeah, I will for it. sure. I'll definitely put something up when uh, when it becomes available. Mm, cool. Um, well, let's talk about Unreal. This is a uh, new season is starting pretty soon, right? Yeah, February twenty sixth. Ah, so tell us about your role and uh, uh, on that on that show. Well, I play uh, Warren. He's uh, he's kind of a down home rancher from Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of a good old boy. His mom is sick and she's dying. And before she passes, he really wants to ease her mind and uh, find someone to love and settle down with. And so he heads out to uh, to California to be on Everlasting, which is Unreal's version of The Bachelor, and mm-hmm. uh, to vie for this female sutress's love. And um, yeah, when he gets there, I think it's a bit of a culture shock for him. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's Warren. All right. So in this season of Unreal, it's like a bachelorette season or cause it's the guys vying for the girl. Yeah. Yeah. So in season three, they have a female uh, sutress as opposed to a male <laughs> suitor that they did in the first two seasons. And so it's just a, a ton of hunky young gentlemen vying for the attention of, <laughs> of this uh, very smart and crafty uh, female. So you can do some recruiting for your firehouse. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, they would. I mean, that would that would be quite the calendar if we got all these guys together. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right? Just think about Hallmark being able to release a fireman calendar. On yeah. That movie. <laughs> it would be. It would be something else. Yeah. Everybody would buy it. Don't don't lie. Everyone would, I would buy, buy it. it. <laughs> I'd buy three. <laughs> so, so was it fun to be on the show and? It was great, yeah. It was. Uh, there's very few uh, shows out there that I I actually enjoy myself, and so the chance to be able to work on something that you actually enjoy and you think is important as well. Mm-hmm. Like I love shows that, um, that sort of shine the light back on the industry and pull the curtain back, like this does, mm-hmm. and uh, and spe- especially with reality television being such a a big thing in in our culture these days it's it's cool to see actual ex-producers go on to make a scripted drama and uh sort of pull back the curtain on on one of these shows and show you how these contestants and these storylines are manipulated by the producers and um how the contestants are constantly being fed alcohol to do irrational things and how they're forced to to live together in the same rooms and inherently butt heads with each other and uh so I just thought that was 
really a cool concept. And when the third season came up and I knew they were going to be casting a whole bunch of guys, then I jumped on the opportunity. Mm. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Amber and I actually kind of met through, through our mutual love of reality TV. I'm not that big into the bachelor, but we both love survivor. Oh yeah. Survivor fans. So. <laughs> so if they ever made a behind the scenes scripted drama about survivor, we would like th- that would be interesting right like i just think oh, yeah. like as much as i like i haven't watched a lot of these reality shows i watched a couple seasons of survivor i watched one season of the bachelor with my girlfriend and mm-hmm. but like when they when you actually get to see how these things are constructed and how they're they're made that stuff is so much more interesting to me yeah yeah it would be very very interesting i mean we've gotten some of that from certain podcasts that we listen to and things like that but mm-hmm. yeah it would be a lot of fun i think you could have have fun with that on a um on a show working with like constance and sherry and the yeah people there. yeah they're incredible i mean as far as acting ability goes they're basically at the top of the food chain i mean they're constantly nominated for various awards for playing these mm-hmm. parts and uh I mean, I think Sherry's been acting since she was a kid and it shows. She mm-hmm. just has this natural ease about her. And uh, I mean, she was directing as well. Constance, I think, uh, did her first directing. She directed an episode for her first time during our season, but Sherry had directed a few things before. And just to see both of them bounce from behind the camera to in front of the camera, coordinating all these actors, because it's such a large ensemble cast. And uh a crew of over a hundred people and just, and then they had to, you know, stay in their character and remember all their lines and just be able to do both things seamlessly for the sake of time. And it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. Just very talented women. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It is really fun also. Cause it, it's a show that really allows like strong female characters. Totally. I was driving down Sunset Boulevard yesterday and there's a <laughs> giant billboard of the two of them just smoking cigars. And it's like season three, unreal, February 26th. And it's just Siri and Constance with these big stogies in their mouth, like looking like, like bosses. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind and will indulge us. I have just a couple of quick, silly questions to ask Please. you. Please. Okay. I love silly. And there's like, you know, like rapid fire. They don't have to be super... Rapid like, fire. Okay, so okay. I got to answer quick. Well, I mean, well, no, <laughs> I'm just going to, there's, you can either answer like quick, short answers. You can go out into it, but. I'm going to you know. attempt to go quick, short answers. Okay, okay. love it. So yeah. first things first, best ice cream flavor. Uh, tiger. Excellent. Favorite color? Uh, black. Ooh. Um, <laughs> what music are you listening to right now? Uh a lot of chance the rapper amazing okay um what is your go-to date night food mm. oh my girlfriend's vegan um i was gonna say steak but that's really selfish <laughs> given the circumstances <laughs> i would definitely be eating steak um i don't know uh thai okay amazing uh go-to date night activity uh movie in i, I just, love it yeah Ooh. which ones do you okay. like which movies? Yeah. Like, just type a movie, I guess. Great date night movie. Oh, great date night movie? Um, and, you know, what makes a great date night movie is like a Judd Apatow, like a, a comedy mm-hmm. that's heartfelt and, uh, you know, like This is 40 or something like that. I think mm-hmm. uh, those make great date night movies. Awesome. Okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay. Um, beaches or mountains? Mm, mountains. Okay. Suit and tie or sweats? Oh, on the day-to-day, it's sweats almost every day, but I like a suit and tie. Okay. Um, Favorite holiday? Uh, uh, Christmas. Great. Um, Okay, and then this is a tough one. Okay. Favorite Hallmark movie? The next Vineyard movie is going to be my favorite. I'll say that. I like to look forward excellent yeah. also in the in the i have to ask in summer in the vineyard when you guys were all in your like white suits and stuff <laughs> did yeah. you guys just want to make a boy band music video <laughs> did you we we took me and uh and jeremy and uh and brendan we took like a, a great boy band photo have you seen that at all i haven't but i just I saw should. everybody in white and i was like how 
is the Backstreet Boys song not going right now? Yeah, so we we definitely made several videos, which will never get released, of us singing along to the Backstreet Boys. And then um, we took a photo of the three of us in our white suits that looks like the cover of a boy band album. That uh, I should actually send that to you. It's hilarious. Um, and then the week after, I was actually in Vegas, and uh, we went to see the Backstreet Boys, and I bought that suit off the set, and I wore it to the concert. Amazing. And then we got, really? and then we got so to meet funny. them after. So, yeah. That's <laughs> That is... I am, first of all, super jealous. And also, I'm so happy that it occurred to you guys that it was just such a boy band moment. Oh, it was completely. It was, I, I had so much fun every time I stepped into that suit. Oh, man. Okay, mm-hmm. awesome. I, this, that filled all of my dreams. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much for coming on and, and, uh, letting us talk to you for the on the podcast we really appreciate it yeah no not at all thanks for having me it was great sure. um so where can people find you uh you can find me on instagram at marcus underscore rosner and on twitter at the marcus rosner i think okay i should, uh, I should really have that stuff second nature i don't use the twitter <laughs> as much these days but instagram i'm all over Cool. Yeah. yeah. We will. Uh, and, and when are you going to be on um, Home and Family, you said? Uh, February 23rd. Great. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, thank you again. We really appreciate it. And Amber, where can people find you? Um, as always, people can find me. I'm at Amber Brainwaves on Twitter, and that's it. You can find me <laughs> at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and YouTube. And so check that out. And please follow us on uh, all of our social media at Hallmarkies Pod at in, on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, iTunes. Everything we really appreciate your rating us on iTunes. If you get a chance, that would be really helpful. And uh, thanks, thanks again, and uh, and thanks for listening. And we will be uh, back again soon. Absolutely. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>